Okay, so we're looking at IELTS task two, and where pattern is discuss advantages and disadvantage, and do the advantages outweigh the, di the disadvantages? Okay, so which is it? Is it good or is, is it bad? So let's take a look at the topic. Nowadays, people use social media to keep in touch with others and be aware of news. Do the advantages of this outweigh the disadvantages? Okay, so pretty straightforward, social media, pros and cons. This is a very common topic. You could get it in the writing, you could get it in the speaking. You should definitely know what your opinion is on this and be prepared to like give some reasons because it's very likely to come up. Okay, so let's take a look at this candidate's introduction. First thing I think when I look at it, I've not even read it yet. I'm looking, I think it's too short. Okay, I can clearly see it's just a two sentence introduction. Really, if you're going for 6.0 or higher, you should try and write at least three or four sentences for your introduction. You're, you, it's giving yourself the chance to show more grammar, show more vocabulary, and show more task achievement, okay? So with a shorter introduction, it's fine, but you're limiting yourself in how much you show the examiner. So if you think of IELTS, as your chance to show off your skills, you have to show the examiner that you can do things like use complex vocabulary, idiomatic language, and so on. Okay, so that's, you know, limiting yourself by just using two sentences. So it is certainly true that the use of social media has significantly changed the way we communicate with each other as well as socially. Um, this doesn't mean as well as socially, because communication is social. Um, so maybe it has significantly changed the way we communicate with each other um, as well as how we perform social interactions. Okay, so you could say social interactions is slightly different to communication because communication is verbal and you could say social interactions is like, um, like physical meeting and so on. In my opinion, the benefit of this innovation clearly offsets its disadvantages. Um, okay, that's fine. But I, what I would like to see uh, people do when they say this is give me an example of why. Like, what's your thesis statement? You know, um, in my opinion, um, the convenience, the convenience of this innovation, uh, the advantages of the convenience of this innovation clearly offset um the disadvantages to young people or something like that give me give me your reason why and you could um give me some indications of, of set up the debate okay what are the pros and cons okay so while some people argue that the increase in social media has reduced uh young people's social skills um new evidence uh shows that the positive impacts on people's lives are growing stronger Okay, so set up the debate. Give me some more background information. So that's what I want to see this candidate do in their introduction. Okay, let's look at that body one. There are several drawbacks of using social media. One of the downsides is that users can get fake news or unverified information. For example, a video of grinding uneven teeth down with nail files, oh my God, um, was on TikTok, uh, was a big hit recently on TikTok. God. Um, but afterwards, there were news articles from dentists urging uh, urging people or urging viewers to stop immediately. Oh my God, yes. Uh, indiscriminate following uh, indiscriminate following of these kinds of videos can be detrimental to ignorant youths. I really like this indiscriminate following. What a nice uh, phrase. Like that's really great vocabulary there. Uh, but I wouldn't say ignorant use. Can we get to ignorant use? Ignorant is is quite strong and quite negative. Okay, so I, we would probably say perhaps something like immature or um, impressionable. So if I say impressionable, sorry, let me just write that again so it's a bit bigger for you to see. If I say impressionable, it means that you can easily be impressed. So easily led. So it's easy for you to see and want to follow a trend. But impressionable, it doesn't have, it's a negative word, but it's not like a strong negative. It's kind of like, oh, he's just a young person. So of course he's a bit impressionable. Okay. So it's not necessarily a really negative or really bad thing. Um, so I would just want to change that because I think that's a little bit too harsh. 
Another negative um, aspect is that the dependence of young people on social media is too high recently, is increasingly high recently. Studies have shown that the younger you're exposed to social media, the more likely you are to lack general communication skills in adulthood. I also, this is also a very nice, nice phrase, general communication skills in adulthood. That's a very natural way of, of saying it, and that's how we would naturally phrase that while speaking. So that's a very nice phrase this person's used here. Communicating face-to-face -face is more important than anything else. Okay, so here's my um, feeling about this paragraph. It's very, it's nicely argued. We've got lots of, they've used some evidence. They've explained themselves really well. Their task achievement is very high. Um, but I'm thinking as I've re read this, um, they're saying that the benefits are more important than the downsides, but they've just given me very strong reasons why social media is a very bad thing. Okay, so what I want them to add in here, okay, this is going to help their task achievement, is to add in a counter-argument. However, okay, and then explain to me, but why is this disadvantage not real serious? Because I finished reading this paragraph going, oh my God, social media is terrible. Kids are grinding their teeth with nail files. Like we should really stop social media, okay? But we can add in a sentence that's going to sort of negate the negativeness of this paragraph. So it could be something like, however, um, studies have shown, okay, or they've already said studies have shown, so you could say a study by Oxford University, blah, 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 um, has shown that um, if students receive just two sessions um, teaching them about fake news or information or, or social media skills, they are much less likely to follow, to trust um, unverified videos um, or to um, use it instead of social skills. OK, so then you've given me a counter argument and then you said, OK, here's the disadvantage, but it's not a very serious disadvantage. OK, and then I've gone, oh, OK, well, yeah, it's bad that students uh, are grinding their teeth with nail files. I don't know if that's true or not. I hope it's not true. Um, but it's not so serious that it can't be overcome. OK, so then because then you go into the benefits, then you're like, Yes, okay, so some kids are following these bad videos and they don't have social skills. However, if they get lessons about it at school, it's not that serious. And then in spite of these negative effects, then you go into the positives. And can you see how that's a much stronger argument um, for me to read? And it makes your task achievement higher because it makes your argument much more believable. So in spite of these negative effects, social media has brought important benefits as well. One obvious advantage is that it is a fast and easy way to communicate with people wherever they are in the world, and it does not even cost at all. Um, this should be linked to the previous sentence. Don't begin sentences with and. Um, it, and it does not even cost at all. And this is kind of phrased awkwardly. And it is free for most users. Never believe if something's free. Of course, now we know it's not free, but companies are selling your data and information to <laughs> businesses. Another positive effect is that it is a great opportunity for business. Ah, here we go. <laughs> Social media allows companies to look at market responses and needs. And, and it is even used as a means of advertising. Ultimately, social media has become one of the tools to satisfy the human desire to communicate with each other as the internet becomes a part of life. Okay, I think this is okay, but I think this is shorter, right, than the disadvantages section. So if without this sentence, okay, they've gone, oh, this is terrible, and then they've gone, oh, but then, you know, businesses can use it for marketing and it's free to use. This doesn't sound as convincing as, as the previous paragraph. So you really do need this sentence to tell me why it's not a big problem. But again, this is, this is explained okay. They've got two nice reasons. 
Um, I would like them to just explain, but why is this um, explain more? How is this going to help me? Why is this? Yeah, it's good for businesses, but why is that sort of good for society? Or why is that better or more important than the fact that children are filing their teeth using nail files? <laughs> you know, so it's kind of hard to say, well, kids are growing up without communication skills, but businesses can make a lot of money from marketing to you. Do you see what I mean? It doesn't feel naturally like one is stronger than the other. Um, so I would like them to explain more that maybe businesses can use this money um, to fund services for children or businesses can use this money um, to get products to people who really need them, like people who are sick or, you know, need friendship groups or something. I would just want to see this explained a bit more to make it more convincing. In conclusion, although there are some drawbacks to using social media, this prompt and ever-friendly technology has greatly improved our ability to commu communicate socially and economically. <laughs> this prompt and ever-friendly, I, 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 it's, a, it's a good phrase. It's very natural. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily use that phrase to describe social media. You know what I mean? <laughs> like ever friendly. <laughs> I wouldn't describe Instagram as ever friendly, but I mean, I can kind of see what they're going for. It seems to me that social media has brought us more benefits than disadvantages. Again, this is this is a nice phrasing. I can tell that this person's really studied IELTS because they have these, obviously, this is the structure that they use every time they answer this type of essay, like this phrase, this prompt and ever friendly technology. It seems to me that. So I can see that they've kind of got a formula that they use a lot. Um, but overall, as a conclusion, I think it's fine. They've summarized the advantages and they've clarified that's what they think. Okay, so in terms of task achievement, I thought this candidate did a pretty good job. So to be honest, they're probably sitting up in a sort of 6.5 task achievement band. Okay, they, they did everything that the task asked them to do. They explained a lot with using detail. Okay, and they gave examples um, of what they meant. To get higher, I would have wanted them to add in, first of all, that counterpoint in body one. Okay, like I said, to show me why is this not a very serious disadvantage. Okay, and then in body two, needed a bit more. Okay, so it says in the mark screen, fully explain the position. Okay, so they, they, they explained a little bit, but they didn't fully explain why this business benefit benefits everybody else. Okay, or why is that better than kids can't communicate? So that's really going to help them move up past that 6.5 band. In terms of cohesion and coherence, again, I would want to put in terms of 6.5. They used really nice linking words. The paragraphing was very consistent and good. They had a good introduction, good conclusion. I would like to see a slightly longer introduction would help them out. And then again, it's about more... Um, linking vocabulary okay so i'm thinking about that sentence that they just started with and the fragmented sentence vocabulary i probably give a seven some nice vocabulary they used um tried to use different paraphrases in different ways of saying it they had some nice words in there so i thought vocabulary was a seven in terms of grammar probably a 6.5 and the 6.5 probably it comes from complex sentences Okay, so there was a couple of times where I thought their sentences uh, could have been a bit longer, linked together a bit better uh, in general. But overall, I see would see this coming out as a 6.5. Um, and I think they've really got a chance to bump up to a 7. Clearly, this person's got a good vocabulary and has studied a lot. Um, and I think that can come first off from the task achievement, can go, go up a little higher, and then also from the grammar, from making sure they're linking together their sentences nicely into longer, more complex sentences. But overall, I think this candidate did a really uh, good job and had a nice essay.